welcome to Facts on Four, a 10-minute show devoted to Ward 4 in the city of Brockton. My name is Susan Nicastro. I sit on the city council of Brockton representing Ward 4, also known as the south side of Brockton. Today, I literally am going to be talking about some facts on Ward 4. And I'll begin by showing you a map of Ward 4. I love maps. This is Ward 4. It is bounded on the east side by Thatcher Street. It's over here. It's bounded on the west side by West Bridgewater. On the north, the north side by South Worth Street, Brookside Avenue, Lawrence Street, East Union Streets. That's up here. And then on the south side also by West Bridgewater. So that's my ward that I represent and all the streets that make it up. I'm not sure of the population of Ward 4. Um, I haven't been able to obtain that information from the city. However, in 2018, a Campello visioning report was prepared by the City of Brockton's Economic and Planning Office with the Old Colony Planning Council. And this is the area of Ward 4 that they covered from Nielsen Street on Main Street all the way down to the West Bridgewater line. So if we go back to this map, this study covered only this much of Ward 4, roughly a third of it, OK? And some of the results of this study include that in 2017, that bit of Ward 4 had a population of about 22,500 people, OK? Compare that 22,500 people to the city population, which is about 98,000 people. And we'll know for sure what the current population of the city is next year when the federal government conducts its census, which it does every 10 years. Okay, of those 22,500 people in that portion of Ward 4, 80% are ages 55 or less. So we're young in, in that section of Ward 4. We're also ethnically and culturally diverse, which is wonderful. In 2017, that portion of Ward 4 was made up of about 7,600 households. And a majority of them were rentals. 49.1% uh, were rentals. 48.2% of those households were owner-occupied. Now, the city on a whole is 56% owner-occupied residences and 44% rental housing. So in that section of Campello, we have a greater number of rental housing units than we do owner-occupied units, which I think is kind of interesting. And if you want to compare all of Campello to the city, all of Campello or Ward 4 is roughly 30 to 35 percent of the entire city population to give you an idea of how many people live in Ward 4. Um, another way we can look at it is the number of registered voters. Ward 4 in 2018 had 7,736 registered voters, Democrats, Republicans, and unenrolled voters. And that's an increase of about 50 people over the numbers for 2017. So in 2018, we increased by about 50 voters. Um, so roughly 25 to 30 percent of Ward 4 residents are registered to vote, which I'm really hoping that this year that number will increase. Um, it's just so important to vote, you know, f for the city as well as for Ward 4. And I want to thank Laurie in the Elections Commission for dropping everything to provide me with those 2018 figures that I just gave to you. Um, Yesterday's mail brought this letter to my house, and presumably these letters are going out across the city. Um, they're from the Elections Commission, and they're the annual census that the Elections Commission does. And this information results in a list of Brockton voters that's provided annually, usually by the summertime it's printed. It's so important that you fill out this census when you get it in your homes so that we have an accurate idea of people living in Ward 4 and voting in Ward 4, okay? Um, so those are some, that's some information about Ward 4, some facts and figures that I thought 
would be interesting for you to think about. Um, so now the second in bit of information I had for you is some Ward 4 activity at the local boards lately. There is an, a proposed office building at 1048 Main Street in Campello that has just cleared the technical review process and will next be appearing before the planning board for some more approvals. Also, the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, which is scheduled for tonight, which I'm recording this on February 12th, is going to be postponed to next week. They weren't sure what date it would be held on, so if you're interested in it, go on the city website and check under meetings when the rescheduled date is. In any event, when the February meeting is held, there are two award for matters, award matters of note. The first one is property at 26 Layden Street. The owners are seeking relief to turn a two-car garage on the property into a single-family home. And there's also a property, 1151 Main Street. It's technically located in Ward 3, but it's, it, it has impacts on Ward 4 because Ward 4 is across Main Street from it. Uh, this property is at the corner of Main and Market Streets. And at the Zoning Board of Appeals in February, the owners are seeking relief to renovate and operate a restaurant in that location. The Traffic Commission of the City of Brockton will meet next on February 28th. And among its agenda items will be three matters that were begun in January that are located in Ward 4. Um, the owners of 861 Main Street have requested a second handicapped space, which will benefit Holy Tabernacle Ministries, which is located in that building. And uh, a stop sign was requested on Green Place at, at its intersection with Clifton Avenue. And finally, um, signage, stop signs were requested at the intersection of Montello and Nilsen Streets. And so I'll find out at the, light, the Traffic Commission meeting at the end of the month whether these three requests will be approved by the Traffic Commission. The License Commission meets monthly. At its January meeting, which was at the very end of January, there were several one-day alcohol permits that were requested and granted for events that were held at the Fruit Center, located at 891 Montello Street. First Evangelical Lutheran Church owns the Fruit Center. It's the old St. Margaret's Gymnasium complex. And they've renovated the uh, basketball court and theater area. They're holding private events there that they cater um, from inside the church. I understand they're very nice. I don't know if you're aware of it. In any event, uh, they, they seek alcoholic permits that go in front of the License Commission. At the Conservation Commission, on February 20th at its next meeting, uh, there's land on Sergeant's Way in Ward 4 that's seeking an extension of its order of conditions. And uh, recently there's land on South Main Street, the old Nilsen Fence property close to the West Bridgewater Line that has been going through CONCOM to uh, put a Massachusetts Best car dealership, used cars and repairs at that location. Finally, the City Council's Public Safety Com Commission will meet tomorrow night, February 13th. Three of the four, mem the four matters on its agenda are located in Ward 4. There's a property at 12 Riverside Avenue that is seeking both a garage license and a garage repair license that will be considered by the Public Safety Com Committee. And also, there's a petition of Brewster Ambulance at 1531 Main Street for a garage license. Well. The last matter I want to close with has to do with re recent doings at the City Council. Um, the City Council recently considered a $7.8 million appropriation that was proposed to pay for improvements to our wastewater treatment facility that's located on Oak Hill Way in Ward 4. These improvements, this money, would be financed by a uh, bond from the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust that we will apply for upon approval by the City Council. And this was discussed at the Finance Committee meeting on February 4th. It was covered by the Enterprise newspaper in an article that appeared on Saturday, February 9th. And the focus of the article was on the sewer rates that will likely increase or the re-increase that will be asked for in the future to cover the bond payments on this debt. 
I found the info that was provided to us by the city to be lacking and to be insufficient. And so I additionally received a number of, of messages and phone calls from Ward 4 constituents that were concerned about um, proposed sewer rate increases in the future. And you should know that these sewer rates have not been increased for nearly 10 years. They've been status. So at last night's city council meeting, the meeting of February 11th, I made a motion to send this, mat this matter back to the Finance Committee for more information and vetting out. And I, I'm pleased to report that the City Council approved my motion narrowly by a 6-5 vote. Some of the comments that were made as part of discussion of my motion suggested that more time and more information was not necessary to make this decision and that I was nitpicking. And um, I, I want to suggest that all of you watch the video of this February 11th meeting and see for yourselves whether, you know, what you think and whether you think that more information might be necessary. And I just want my Ward 4 residents to know that I am personally aware that we bear a lot of burden in the city for the landfall, the landfill and the impacts of the landfill on us, for the impacts of this wastewater treatment plant over the years, and for proposed pr trash um, incinerators and uh, fossil fuel burning power plant. We bear a lot in Ward 4, and so I'm especially aware of it and I'm especially vigilant for us. And I will sweat the details and nitpick if necessary to protect Ward 4 and to vet out wh whatever is going on that will impact my Ward 4 constituents. That's all I have for you in February. I'm wearing red. Last week I wore red um, for heart awareness days and months. This week I'm wearing red for Valentine's Day or Galentine's Day as some of my friends are calling it. I want to wish all of Ward 4 and my and all of the city of Brockton, a happy Valentine's Day. Um, this is Facts on Four. I'm Susan DeCastro, the Ward 4 City Councilor. If you have questions or comments related to Ward 4 or any of the content of this show, call me at 508-897-1314 or email me at snacastro at cobma.us. Thank you very much.